to make a video on uh, Honest Truth, how I started as a musician. Um, it started when I was 11 years old. Uh, I wanted to learn how to play acoustic guitar because I saw my dad play and I could hear him play his electric guitar. And it made me curious um, uh, music and uh, how to start with music. And my favorite bands when I was growing up were, um, well, in middle school, I was in, I was in Green Day. I was into, uh, Tool was the no-no band. I couldn't listen to that. Um, well, no, no, but, you know, I'm just making a joke, you know, I, they, it was, it was just too explicit, basically with the yelling and stuff like that. That was a cool band to listen to. So I, I listened to Tool, listened to System of a Down. Um, those were the cool bands that I liked. They're used drop tunings. And I started out with this guitar teacher and he taught me the blues scale and he wanted me to learn Red House. And it was in, um, a regular tune guitar or a half step tune below. And uh, he wanted me to learn to the blues progression first. And I was like, I want to learn how to play tool. I want to learn how to play this. And I was like, my dad taught me the scale. And then I swept up one of the notes and he was like, oh, he teach you wrong. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was a bad experience. So I tried another guitar teacher. Um, There's something like particularly like weird about the guitar teacher, except he did the same with his hands. I do the same thing. Like now, nowadays, now I do the same thing with my hands like twitch my hands a little bit that's because it's like but uh he had a really nice guitar he had a paul reed smith i remember that guy uh i forgot his name but uh i went to on to a new guitarist teacher and uh he taught me uh, how to play in a jazz band in middle school um so i learned how to play the chord shapes but i and i i knew the theory like intuitively like i can hear there was a major tonality the tonal center was like in a certain note now i can pick up all that stuff like second nature because i train myself with gear training but i learned the chord shapes and i got taught the chord shapes to play and in, in the right timing like when you play a downbeat you're playing a quarter note or like you're playing like eighth notes or there was this one it was like what was it one one of the one of the rhythms was um i forgot but uh i remember the the strong pattern um So I started out on acoustic guitar, then I got an electric guitar from for my 11th birthday. I got a drive guitar. That was pretty cool. Um, it, that, that guitar sucks now, nowadays, but um, I liked uh, playing it, but the strings kept breaking on it. So I got a new guitar. It was a Red Ibanez. And I also got, later on the year, the year I was in the jazz band, I got a white and black guitar. Uh, Ibanez, uh, RG model. It had a tremolo bar as well. Um, so I learned the chord shapes. I got a scale book. I learned the scales for like minor and major. Um, I I could hear the notes, so I can I can hear the higher positions, so I I can predict like which note I was going to play after that intuitively without knowing the theory at the time. So looking back, I um, started out on the guitar. Then I tried drums just to get a rhythmic background. Um, so with drums, I learned uh, the rudiments. Um, I was in a metal band for a time, for a short time. Then I started my own music journey. And uh, I'm continuing my music journey now. I learned uh, Tenuto as ear training. Um, I was just was obsessed with exercises that I offered. I just saw this app and it was like introductory music theory. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll buy this. It's only like $3. So I got the app and it helped me really evolve as a musician. Now I know ear training. And I can read music on double bass from six months of training with a uh, teacher. 
So all the teachers that have helped me have been invaluable resources or valuable resources, whatever, you know, they're, they're, they're very valuable. That's what I was trying to get at. I, I forgot what the difference was, but uh, invaluable, invaluable. I have to look that up on Google because I sounded like an idiot when I didn't know that, but um, whatever. Uh, it's just a stupid mistake. But uh, so back to the point, I was learning these chord shapes. I learned Crazy Train, you know, the introductory riff. I learned Back in Black. Then I learned System of Down songs. All that really added up to prior experience, basically. And now I know how to read music a lot better. Um, I'm learning the piano at my own pace. Um, but the jazz band really gives you a taste of what it's like to play in a band setting on stage in front of people. That was my first exposure exercise, I guess you could say, to public performance, which is a standard notion of public performance. It's nerve wracking, but people get through it because their anxiety doesn't get the best of them. It's a very difficult to play type of scenario when you have anxiety or you have an underlying disorder, mental illness, what what have you. And I do have that, but I conquer it. Whenever I go on stage, I play my heart out. I just, I get lost in music. And um, so it started out playing guitar. I heard my dad play. Now I wanted to audition for a middle school jazz band. Got in. Then I tried high school jazz band. Didn't work out. The guitar was a piece of crap. Basically, it didn't work right. Um, it was very high action strings, so I can barely play the chords I was playing. Like I know like a minor seven, like, and I know the theory behind a minor seven now, so I can construct chords without using a book. I can just look at the fretboard and be like, okay, that's a C and then that's an E, G, and then there's a B. So I guess you play the open string and I'd know how to do it. Um, that would be a major seven chord. Uh, um, but uh, my beginnings started out on guitar, then I tried drums, I dabbled in bass. I bought a bass and I bought a piano. Um, my interest in music has never stopped, even regardless of my belief. I didn't say irregardless. I said even regardless of my belief. Uh, I know irregardless is not a word. So I, I have a pretty expansive vocabulary. I just sometimes I even get mixed up with the meanings, which is unfortunate because meanings determine if you're going to actually use the word in a sentence, right? So... I digress. Anyway, moving on. So, uh, I've been working on ear training on Tenuto, and I get I got another app, Earmaster Seven in Aurelia. I downloaded all the mini packs for that. Um, that really proves Aurelia isn't that great of an app, but Earmaster Seven is one of the best apps you can get for ear training my opinion and a lot of other people's opinions so that's consistent with reality uh what isn't really consistent with reality is to know people think it's like a like a joke app or it's like a beginner app but there's really valuable exercises invaluable valuable there it comes again but anyway uh i'm gonna beat myself up after i uh not now literally i don't i don't have cell phone but uh um I'm gonna basically go on over my mind, I'm be like invaluable, valuable, and then I'm gonna look at the definition. But this was just a live video. I'm just making a joke. I'm making a fool of myself right now. But anyway, um, so I I learned I learned at Imperial Guitar. That was the place I went. And I actually tried a teacher at Imperial Guitar, but I didn't disagree with his teaching methods. I just disagreed with. The fact that you can't really express yourself on a kit while you were playing when you when you had the lesson like you can only do it on practice pads and i was like 
this is nonsense. Like, and I was thinking like, oh, well, he's a good teacher. He just, he knows what he's talking about. It's just that the, 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 the practice pads and like all that, it didn't, like he was, he was obviously really good because he could play a system of down riff perfectly. So I don't know. It, he knew how to read music. He probably would be a good teacher for drumming. I use online drummer now. Um, it's more of an ear-based type of thing when I, when I learn stuff on the drums, so I can see, like, I was looking up um, Sober by Dan Carey, and uh, like that type of beat, and it's really cool. And uh, I, I learned that beat as well as schism, you know, that, that, that. Um, so uh, that's my journey as a musician. It's that's basically in a nutshell of my uh, journey as a musician, or my uh, evolution as a musician from starting stages to ear training stages. Well, it, it was like I can break it down like this. There was jazz band phase. Well, before that, preceding the jazz band phase, I wanted to play guitar. I saw the acoustic guitar. I heard the electric guitar. I tried to play on the acoustic at the time, but I didn't have the calluses. The calluses are what makes you a better player. Um, you can play better. You can play with a lot of ease and stuff like that if you have calluses. Um, so the first step I had on my journey was revolution as a musician. Is, um, I got the guitar, drive guitar. And I got an Ibanez and I got two Ibanezes. Then I had a stage where I was in high school, I was in a band at the same time, or I was forming a band at the same time. And I uh, experimented with drop tunings and stuff like that. Really just rhythmic creativity blossoming or evolving. Now, I, so from, I went from the drop tuning phase with the orchestra for a little short time, I learned how to read music in the bass clef. Now I went on my own experimental phase where I dabbled in my own type of music. I composed crazy time signatures. I did all that I dreamed of that I thought I, I couldn't do without this program, Plotch Pro 9, which is a great program. You can really, I just watch a few videos on how to use the, the MIDI program world, and I just made my own way. And I um, composed music that way. And it just came second nature. After that, I was experimenting in um, gear training. Then I, after that, I was like, okay, I want to learn the music theory behind it. That's great that I can pick up the notes, but I want to learn the music theory, the core fundamental ideas that make music. And then I learned uh, music theory from various books. And uh, now I'm trying to learn at Critique City on the piano. Um, I want to get the sheet music for it, but my PayPal isn't working. So my PayPal isn't working, so I can't get the sheet music. It sucks. So there's going to have to be another way I can do it, but, um, your training apps really help shape my musicianship. I can get a, I can ace the Berkeley uh, music assessment, assessment quiz. Now, because I know the knowledge, like I can just identify, okay, that's a C, that's a D sharp. Okay, what key signature is that? Okay, I know exactly what key signature that is. If you, oh, if it's minor, then you just have to go back three half steps. I know all that. Um, so I don't know what the next phase, my uh, next phase, next evolutionary step, next step of my journey to finding my creativity through music. That's my creative hobby I have, I have is music. Uh, I look at more as a passion, but uh, I'm excluding like divine influence out of my inspirations now because of my own personal religious lack of belief. Um, so 
based on information that I found that really made me change my mind. Um, so I'm reading books and watching this. Just to pass the time away, I was doing math equations. I finished most of the books. I got one on pre-algebra I finished completely. Um, I did some of the practice problems in this calculus book. I learned, learned a little bit about astronomy from reading Astronomy for Dummies, which I just bought this week. Did I mention? I got these two items for a dollar, which is a great find. So, in conclusion, I'll break down like this. I heard my dad play guitar. The sequence of events was, I heard my dad play guitar. I needed a guitar. I got it for Christmas. Then, I dabbled in other music. After the jazz band, I did orchestra. I played in a band, which uh, taught me a lot about the real world, believe it or not. Um, you have to be careful. Being in a band is a privilege, but it can be taken away from you at any time. The band members are what reflect back your progress. And uh, I just didn't have it for the band. Like I, I watched a Slayer interview, uh, Kerry King. I'm not that big of a fan of the band, but he just said the guitarist didn't have it. He didn't have the, the, the talent to play the riffs that they demanded he played. And that's just the sad fact that you can get expelled from a band. But I, I still continued my evolution as a musician. The sequence of events led to me learning ear training, which would have been impossible to learn without process of elimination and getting fundamental ideas in my head. Then I learned music theory, and now I'm trying to sight read. And that's pretty much my progression as a musician. All right, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, a like, and comment if you liked it. Say uh, how your journey as a musician really started and uh, where it's gone now. Hopefully it's not uh, a train wreck story. But, yeah, I'm just making a joke. It's not going to be that bad. Like even School of Rock had the uh, joke that he got kicked out of the band. Then he started his own band with school. He, he made his own life, and he did it through music, which is great. I love that movie. All right. Thanks for watching.